this is uh, this is the perfect segue into this week's reading series. If we're going to talk about um, sectors of the American public that are uh, basically impossible to dislodge from our politics and are largely have their have their their bony arthritic fingers <laughs> on the steering this wheel. Is it. This is them. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm going to go uh, stigmatize the bathroom for a second. Before <laughs> okay. we start this. The dingleberries and the asshole now, of American politics. Now, uh, uh, on our last episode, we did a reading series about uh, Selena Zito's Project Main Street and hashtag I I O opening or whatever. Uh, and by the, the way, I want to. So somebody pointed out that this online. One of the towns they went to, Londonderry, New Hampshire, uh-huh. is actually very wealthy. Oh no shit! Very yeah. affluent. <laughs> yeah. Not in any way hard scrabble or small town or anything. It's a bunch of fucking people who moved out of Massachusetts because they don't have a sales tax or state income tax. <laughs> but this is a. Uh, but well, uh, this is much the same. We, we no, well, we dis- yeah. It's, I mean, these people absolutely this is the same. But now we just dis- we discussed this sort of uh, the phony brand of you know post twenty sixteen election journalism of you know trying to find out of work steel workers to ask them why they voted for Trump and having that be the, the, the stand in for like, oh, yeah. this is Trump's base of support, you know, the the white working class to use a shorthand. This is uh, from Politico this week by Michael Grunwald uh, that I got to say is probably the only one of these pieces that seeks to sort of go out of D.C. and New York and find Trump voters yeah. that I find at all useful because it does capture the people who are actually Trump's oh, base of support. Base. Exactly. Are yeah. incredible, are Old, wealthy white, retirees. Wealthy. Yeah, definitely. Everywhere, that is his biggest area of support in the election and since. Definitely These people are either. not working class by any stretch of the imagination. I'll just, let's just get into this. This is called a Generation Pickleball. Ugh. Welcome to Florida's political Tomorrowland. <sighs> this is a profile of a gigantic, retirement gated retirement community just outside of orlando called the villages that honestly should just be called the village because it's like that spooky movie and there's a twist ending uh the twist ending being that they're actually living in the modern world that's just as true for this uh, (laughs) segment of the population come Uh, on (laughs) did i just spoil that movie for you virgil (laughs) (laughs) he's dead the whole time by the way in sixth sense okay so there is some amazing uh, color in this story, and it's also again white I, predominantly. Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, it's also in, incredible. It's incredibly telling about the mindset of the Trump voter. Like we said, how can you know? How can you hear audio of kids being screaming and being separated from their parents and be like, "Hmm, good, more of that." Yes, please. The answer lies in this article. So I'm just going to begin here. The villages is America's largest retirement community a carefully planned, meticulously groomed dreamscape of gated subdivisions, wall-to-wall golf courses, adults-only pools, and old-fashioned town squares. It's advertised as Florida's friendliest hometown, and it's supposed to evoke a bygone era of traditional values when Americans knew their neighbors, respected their elders, and followed the rules. It has the highest concentration of military veterans of any metropolitan area without a military base. It has strict regulations enforcing the uniformity of homes, as as well as the people living in them. No families with children except to visit. And it is Trump country, a reliably Republican, vocally patriotic, almost entirely white enclave that gave the president nearly 70% of the vote. (laughs) Calling it a metropolitan area is kind of loose because it is just a giant sprawling suburb, but it has been growing nearly exponentially. In 2010, it was like 60,000 or so people living there. Now it's well over 100,000. It's nearly tripled in size since then. It says your older voters are America's most reliable voters, which is why baby boomer boom towns like the villages represent the most significant threat to a potential Democratic wave in Florida in 2018 and the most significant source of Republican optimism for many years to come. Here's where it gets to the nub of it. Trump supporters who get the most media attention tend to be economically anxious laborers in economically depressed factory towns. But in Florida, economically secure retirement meccas like the villages are the real reason Trump won in 2016 and why the state's Republicans who have controlled Tallahassee for two decades think they can avoid a blue wave in 2018. 
It makes sense that they're coming to the villages because this leisure class Sunbelt Oasis is a lot more pleasant than the dying working class Rust Belt towns that journalists usually visit on Trump voter safaris. It feels like a 40 square mile cruise ship or a college campus without required classes. It has enough golf courses to play a different one every week of the year Jesus and more Christ. than 100 miles of golf cart trails that keep traffic congestion to a minimum. It's like back to school if everyone was Rodney Dangerfield. <laughs> it isn't exactly luxurious, but it's comfortable with a median home price above $250,000. So again, like, yeah, keep that in mind there. These are people who have wealth. They own homes. They golf every fucking day. This is, yeah, this is like if uh, an ancient description of paradise was made by the people who make those memes, like how to get respect from me. One, wear a belt with your pants. <laughs> Two, you know, it, this is... Tuck your t-shirt in. Yeah, there is no way that these people aren't doing child sacrifices to Jimmy Buffett songs. <laughs> like this is the most horrifying thing we've had read in a while. And it's worth pointing out, all of this is owned by one company. Jesus. Um, the Shinra company. <laughs> Uh, here's another telling detail. They talked to a guy, uh, Larry Harmon, who's a former Chicago area stockbroker who runs one of their little investment clubs. He says, I keep telling people, come on, Trump has nothing to do with your portfolio. Harmon, a former Marine, is much more excited about Trump's crusade against the National Football League. <laughs> <laughs> Holy, this fucking dumb hog. Players taking a knee, that's bullshit, Harmon told me. I'm with the president 100%. <laughs> Throw your hand over your heart and respect our flag. <laughs> this, so it's getting this, this guy should live in a kennel. <laughs> like th there is nothing that the world gain. I know I was just saying like we need a program before we can marginalize people, but now like hearing this guy, it's like <laughs> Thank no, this you. guy should Thank live. You. This guy should be naked and live in a kennel. This Thank guy is you. just a fucking dullard. Like the only reason he's voting is because Kaepernick kneeled. <laughs> this guy is. He, you could just amuse him with like a Kong filled with peanut butter. <laughs> this fucking idiot. Oh, there's more. There's way oh, more. It, oh, it gets so much better. But I, I, but I like that was what he gets is like, this guy is smart enough to know that like the fucking stock market doesn't really care who's fucking president. Yeah. He's, mm -hmm. He would be raking it in if Hillary Clinton was still president. Yeah. But he loves Trump because he's willing to stand up to those <gasps> goddamn NFL yeah. players. All right, so when was it? This guy was probably in the Marines during, like, Granada. Yeah. yeah. I didn't strain my MCL for you to kneel, you piece of shit. <laughs> so you guys, uh, it's not a coincidence that the Villages supports the nation's largest American Legion post or that the signs on its bar declared no NFL games on post televisions. <laughs> Oh, my God. So listen, uh, uh, Republicans outnumber Democrats by more than two to one here. And in interviews, they generally express support for Trump's tax cuts, as well as his hands-off approach to Medicare and Social Security. That has helped blunt the perennial Democratic pitch to seniors. Choose us because Republicans are coming for your checks. But what really attracted them to Trump were issues that had little to do with their pocketbooks or their daily lives like his opposition to sanctuary cities or his insistent rhetoric about strength or his attacks on Muslims, MS-13, and protests by black athletes. They feel like Trump is on their side in a cultural war against cop haters. Their perception of scheming foreigners, global warming alarmists, and other politically correct avatars of disorder and decline. They thought President Barack Obama was on the other side, standing with transgender activists, welfare freeloaders, and Islamic terrorists. When Trump vows to make America great again, they sense that he means more like the villages. Oh, let's hope so. <laughs> yeah, these are the people you alienate by talking about bathrooms. And good, I want them to be alienated from the mainstream. Yeah, these are, yeah, if, like, just tomorrow Trump, like, saw a gangland episode that impressed him. And he's like, actually, we're bringing every member of MS-13 over <laughs> to be <laughs> double citizens and they get 10 times. It. Like, just for some reason, like, their lives wouldn't be affected. These people are more likely to be beaten to death with a golf club over, like, some weird mishap that started on kink.com than any <laughs> gang shooting ever. <laughs> It really is like living in a village where there's law and order and people take care of each other, said Baxley, who owns three funeral homes in the villages. <laughs> Boom times for him. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> Trump oh. tapped into that sense that the rest of America isn't like that anymore and some people don't have to follow the rules. This is Jonestown for people who smashed Dixie Kick records. <laughs> <laughs> That's what this is. Like, this, is this is like a... <laughs> Cult. 
And again, yeah, well, what what you know is there a uh, is there a fact check out there or a you know a civil polite reasoned argument that could reach these people? They're telling you point blank. I don't give a shit about the economy or any like any policy that might affect my life. I care that he's standing up to largely imaginary uh, evil villains that lurk just outside the walls of my gated village. I think it's important for people with like a certain political program to believe in the ability of people to change. But these fucking people have always been like this and they will always be like this. What's so monstrous to me, in addition to all of the myriad just disgusting uh, exemplars of racism and and and, and uh, hierarchy. It is the, they think they're defending some city on a hill, and it's this. This is the culture that they're willing to kill the world for. They would they pickleball. Would see a, they would see it's a pickleball. Mil- they would see a million people stacked like corpses stacked on the fucking Mexican border to protect what is essentially a giant open air TGI Fridays. <laughs> That's going to be underwater in 50 years anyway. Yeah, these, that is the fucking world that they're willing to, to just countenance any amount of bloodshed to maintain. They want to do the crusades for the entire world for the Billy Big Mouth bass. <laughs> <laughs> uh, here's some more good stuff. Uh, one recurring phrase from veterans at the Post was that they were 100% behind Trump, even though they might quibble with his tweets, his extramarital activities, or even his policies. Chet Sturgis, a 78-year-old <laughs> Oh my god. A 78-year-old Navy veteran who served on an aircraft carrier during the Vietnam War, disagrees with Trump about trade and immigration. He spent time in Juarez as a manager of for Ford, and he believes a border wall would hurt America as well as Mexico. But he said he still is 100% aboard the Trump train because the president respects the military, stands up for freedom, and calls out the right enemies. I love it when he says fake news, Sturgis says. <laughs> I only watch Fox because they're the only media that tells the truth. Hannity especially. You fucking <laughs> clapping seal. You I fucking love- <laughs> dumb shit. I love what he says. What the president says is catchphrase. Yeah. <laughs> I also voted for Urkel in 1992. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, the vo- yeah, the voting officials keep warning me I can't vote with pogs. So I just ate them. I choked on them. I didn't get to vote in 2012 for this reason. <laughs> I just imagine thinking, yeah, uh, you know, the one channel that I watch that I like and it has the shiny images and everyone's yelling and their faces are all red and they got big veins pop. They're telling me the truth. How would you know? I'm not comparing it to anything. Well, it sounds right. It sounds like what I think is happening, so it must be the one telling the truth. This you could literally you could wipe out about half of the worst part of the electorate, not like kill them, but just from the voting rolls by giving them a busy box and be like, here, here's what you vote on. You get as many votes as you like. And they'll be like, boop, 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 boop. <laughs> I got an idea. I got it from the in, where the red fern grows. You drill a hole in a log and you put one of those uh, you fuck Trump. You put one of those, <laughs> no, you, you put nails into the in sideways, uh, diagonally into it, and then you put one of those Trump coins at the bottom, and then they reach their hand in to grab ah. it, and then they try to take it out, and they can't do it, and then they won't go to vote. S- simple. Uh, wouldn't be uh, more anti-democratic than the way the Republican Party has set up voting in Florida Absolutely right not. now. Yeah. So, um, here's some more. Here's some more gems. We're proud to be deplorables. We're proud to have a president who gets things done and doesn't take any crap, said Louise Neasley. Proud shithead. A 69-year-old villager from Rock Hill, South Carolina. All Obama did was play golf. When I pointed out, <laughs> when, oh, no, no, listen. When I pointed out, when I pointed out that Trump plays more golf than Obama did, she didn't miss a beat. Okay, but then he goes to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. My prep, my he may he may golf for seven hours in a row, but when he's done, he gets in there and he watches extra. I, I, <laughs> I think I think David Roth made this point on Twitter, but like I love all of the euphemisms journalists and reporters have to use now to say that Trump isn't lying. So they said Trump promulgated a falsehood today. Yeah. But even better than that is all the euphemisms that they tr- where they try to transcribe what their sources are telling him that doesn't make it sound like all he does is yell at TV all day. <laughs> They're like, uh, Trump met with his advisors after seeing a news item that disturbed him greatly and decided to reverse course. Executive time, baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He gets to work after smash cut to 
You know, a lot of people say that people are unfair to Jennifer Lawrence, but actually you can tell she's a very nasty person. <laughs> <laughs> Look, he, he watches more Fox and Friends by 7 a.m. than the rest of you do in your entire life. <laughs> yeah, he has been on the phone with QVC late into the night. <laughs> Uh, Neasley and her boyfriend, 78-year-old former Marine Joe Campbell, believe huh. Obama dragged America into a virtual state of anarchy. Yep, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Even though crime rates have been dropping for decades, they carry a three they carry 380 Berettas when they leave the villages in case they encounter carjackers. <laughs> Damn right. Hover around chakras. <laughs> hover around with a 50 cal on the front. <laughs> yeah. the, uh, the warthog from Halo, but it's like the bumper sticker on the back. My son dropped out of the Naval Reserves. <laughs> he goes, uh, damn right. It's dangerous out there, Campbell said. And even though the population of undocumented immigrants did not increase under Obama, Campbell is sure they've been pouring across the border. <laughs> We need the wall because a lot of them are rapists and killers. <laughs> and the ones that aren't, I'm tired of paying for them. Campbell says he beat up two hippies who spat on him and called him a baby killer when he returned from Vietnam. And he's just as disgusted by those who protest police brutality today during he the anthem. He thinks that happened. To him. He thinks that ha- it's, it did not happen to him. Let's let's. let's Get that out there. There's a 0% chance that happened. But he, you strap him to a fucking lie detector, he thinks that happened oh, yeah. to him because he saw it in a movie. And in the past 40 years, all the prions and fucking KFC in his brain have turned it into a fucking piece of cement. <laughs> if you, if you, and I, it's turned that memory. It's like when fucking Reagan thought he'd liberated Dachau yeah. because he saw it in a fucking movie. Campbell, Campbell intimated to me that after his friend got his legs blown off in Vietnam and he started his shrimp company. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, Matt, you're exactly right if you hook that dude up to a lie detector and ask him about that antidote it would be a flat line yes yeah. it would not even it would not tremble I, in the slightest i guarantee that story was originally one then he met another vietnam shithead who said yeah i also did that and he said oh actually i did two <laughs> <laughs> yeah i haven't had an easy life yeah my mom actually my mom had to fuck the principal of the school to get me in but you don't see me asking for handouts <laughs> One time, some uh, liberal sheriff uh, chased me through the woods, and I had to use a bunch of booby traps <laughs> yeah. in the yeah, Pacific was, Northwest was, to stop it before Richard Krenner talked me down. Yeah, that sheriff was trying to make me watch the NFL. I just didn't want to be hassled. When I was a child, these two burglars tried to break into my house, <laughs> but I used elaborate traps to foil them. You know, I used to have, I used, I had uh, easily over a hundred puppies, and then this liberal <laughs> bitch from the fashion industry. It was in a winter. <laughs> <laughs> and the Trump fights against her every day. Another, another, another. Uh, view from the villages uh 98 of the villagers are white people really and oh, they're, wow. yeah, that's wow. surprising uh and their attitudes towards other people including immigrants and minorities who work here as landscapers and roofers and waiters sometimes go beyond politically incorrect when i mm. asked a 73 year old former factory supervisor named sam huff why he <laughs> these are, these are what, real names. all these names have double chins <laughs> Me and fucking Felix created all these guys on Twitter in 2014. So, uh, me, me and Matt found like a bag of K and blacked out. And we, we were just like, all right, dude, wait, his name is fucking... How about his, how about his name is fucking uh, Hunter Tuggle? <laughs> and we're like, nah, that's too unbelievable. Now they're all in here. Uh, Bliff Gunson. Uh, so when, when asked... <laughs> when, when Sam Huff was asked why he liked Trump, he replied... There's a lot of Mexicans in this country, and somebody's got to something's got to be done about it. Why? Why does anything <laughs> need to be done about it? All right, there's uh, a lot of fucking dip dipshit like assholes who think, oh, you know, I kind of, I'm kind of a mutt. You need to go too. You need to go more. Uh, here's the last bit. Like this is this is the other the other thread in all of this, which is um, conspiratorial nonsense and religious end times. Uh, Hell yeah, ap- ap- apocalyptic Hit thinking. It. Mel- Melvin Witten, pastor of the New Freedom Fellowship Church at the Villages, is about to introduce the first speaker in his God and Country series for a message titled Exposing the New World Order and How It Affects Our Freedom. Right on. But first, he shares an inspirational quote with the crowd in the pews. As long as we have God, we are never alone. Witten also asked the president of the Trump Club of the Villages, David Gee, and Tampa-based author of a book called Trump and the Resurrection of America, John Michael Chambers, to say a few words. 
John I, Michael Chambers is like the most respected man in town because he's the only one without a stupid name. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, how did you do it? How did you do it? Said uh, Scott Bloop. <laughs> Although I have to say that he does have, he, his name sounds like he was indicted but not convicted for trying to kill Jesse Jackson with a fucking grenade launcher in 1989. <laughs> yeah. I believe it was divine providence that put Mr. Trump in office, Witten explained to me mm. later. The featured speaker is Alex Newman, a journalist with the far-right John Birch Society's magazine, and his topic is the socialist, globalist, atheist conspiracy led by the United Nations and the government school system that's brainwashing American children into ignorant collectivists who abandon their churches and rely on CNN fake news for their information. <laughs> Honestly, God, I feel sorry for the John Birch Society because you're this like old, venerable, conspiracy-minded, like crazy organization that's been doing it since the late 50s, early 60s. And then you have like QAnon, come on, with like these like people are being held in like the bottom of pizza restaurants. What do you do to like compete with that? They need better social media. This right, is why exactly. everyone needs to pay a social media consultant. You don't do it in house. <laughs> yeah, the John Birch Society, I think probably in some way it's like if you were listening to like Grandmaster Flash in like nineteen eighty and you see rap now, and you're like, I guess it's cool <laughs> that it's big now, but it's like, I was really there from the beginning. Right. See, the, the thing about the John Burst Society is that they do have a social media manager, but the problem is that he's been doing all of his tweets on a typewriter that he doesn't know <laughs> is connected to the internet. Yeah. John Burst Society, they really were, like, just any book you read about, like, 60s or 70s politics is cool because it's just off in the... It's just like, everything was a smoke-filled back room, but in yeah. the corner, masturbating openly in that smoke-filled back room was the John Birch Society. They just always show up in some part near the end of the chapter being like, and the John Birch Society uh, was working on connecting Jack Parr to a scheme to steal children. <laughs> yeah. It's like what happened to a... Lyndon LaRouche. Yeah. You know, like he's, he's just out of the scene now that Jones is. He's got his fans. You know, his fans are never going to leave. Die hard he's got good social, I think. Because <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think he's staying relevant. They've got a blog. Yeah, Eisenhower as the communist agent is like the OG fucking... Yeah, conspiracy. Well, that was never mind. That was so for good. right wing, like modern right wing, right wing conspiracy. That was Nirvana's never mind. Yeah, no, seriously. And I gotta say, a little overproduced as conspiracy <laughs> theories go. <laughs> uh, here, here, here's a here's a perfect here's a perfect quote. Especially keep in mind where it's being said. Do we have any believers in the hoax of man-made climate change here? Newman asks. The audience laughs derisively, and not a single hand is raised. I didn't think so. This annoys the shit out of me because I know all of these villagers are going to be dead yeah, before the literally the they're place gonna they're going to die. Being like, well, it was now bullshit. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. They, they, they will never. They will always believe it's bullshit, and they will never have to live where yeah. their actual villages will be a fucking uninhabitable swamp. Yeah. In about fifty I years, hope, time. I hope they. I hope they live long. I hope that there's like some sort of fucking like bane tank that fits on the back of their golf courses, their golf carts, and they have to live forever. And they die when like a mosquito who's blown up to the size that they were during the Jurassic period <laughs> flies into their throat. I mean, I'm mad about these guys, but I think I'm madder about the people who are younger than this who are denying it. Who you know when they're older and like the effects come obvious, they're like, oh, we never. We how could we have known? You guys are getting angry over nothing. Uh, you need to be civil about yeah. know, the, the reconstitution of our society and let us keep. Look, all right, that's why pencils have erasers. Okay, yeah. we made a goof. Yeah, but right. when they get old, they'll have a different solution for it, mm. and it's going to be gated communities like the villages oh, yeah, that continue yeah. to fucking consume the world's resources. <laughs> floating gated just communities, a, just a disgusting anus on the fucking. <laughs> can we just get a body fucking, of the planet? Can we get a funnel so that all of the melting ice caps just drop on these specific cities? <laughs> And not on fucking poor Bangladesh that did literally nothing to make this happen. We just need some sort of giant slip and slide that will funnel all of the Arctic yeah. into Florida. Yes. Uh, last quote here. At dinner before Newman's speech, G, the head of the Trump Club of the Villages, obser Trump. observed to the Florida director of the John Birch Society that the right has never been more unified. I used, to think of as I used to think of y'all as extremists, he said. Now, when I listen to your message, it sounds pretty mainstream to me. No, he's right. Correct. Wait, that, wait, wait. Good. Get to the quote about uh, the company and the landscapers. But he is 100% right about the, because the, that was, the big claim was always, oh, yeah, we're a big tent over here. We got yeah. libertarians. You, I know the word vendor class, was in it. Just search vendor. Classic li thing, liberals. And, uh, and it's like, yeah, everyone's a Nazi now. 100%. All of them. They're 100%. They're all Nazis because they all see the writing on the wall. They all think that we're going to get swamped for whatever reason. And that's certainly not global warming. Oh. 
Yeah, this, and, this uh, is and so yeah, they're all on the same page. I can't believe I missed this one, Virgil. Okay. Uh, the company does set a conservative tone. The leaders of the Democrat the company that owns the entire yeah. thing. I mean, yeah. you want to talk about Peter Thiel making a seastead Libertopia? I mean, sorry, some company has already done this. They've already <laughs> made a hell town. The, le the leaders of the Democratic Club recently asked for financial support, like the Republican Club had gotten. The company wrote back that it had chosen to focus on giving in a different direction. Yeah. <laughs> the Democrats also gave me a memo the company circulated on last February's Life Without Immigrants Day, demanding the names of any laborers who skipped work mm -hmm. so they could go on a list of, quote, radical individuals ineligible for employment by any of the vendors serving the villages. That's literally what the White Citizens Council did. <laughs> These protesters the are trying to cause harm to the villages. These actions cannot and will not be tolerated. No, that's the White Citizens oh Council. God. That's what they would do. They would collect information on people who were uh, supportive of the civil rights movement so that they could be fired, or if their bosses wouldn't fire them, to pressure their bosses into firing. Hey, them. don't worry, guys. Jonathan Chait is on this violation <laughs> right. of free speech. You know how we talked a couple weeks ago about how there were all those Osprey crashes? Yeah. From the is there any way to get the military to test the Osprey <laughs> above this village? <laughs> because they would probably be in favor. It's like the U.S. military wants to test their they would brand. Volunteer. Yeah. I'm just imagining the end of Outbreak. When they've got the plane oh God, yeah. with the daisy cutter on it, and D Dustin Hoffman talks them into not blowing up the town, only it ends yeah. slightly differently. So one thing I think should be said about this. I think it was the wind shear, sir. Yes, exactly. yeah. One thing I think should be said about this category of people is like this is a familiar archetype in American politics. Like there's always been this idea that like when voters get older, they turn into these like crotchety old people who are very possessive. They don't want to relinquish the wealth that they've built up and blah blah blah. That's a story we tell ourselves. A couple of weeks ago, I don't know if there was a study that prompted this or what, but there's this piece in New York Magazine about how what actually happens to the electorate is that people who are poor, uh, people who are struggling, don't often make it to where, you know, yeah, old age. Yeah, so we believe, you know, all the people who are left are these people who have done really well for themselves through their lives, have managed to keep themselves healthy, and are thus reactionary in their beliefs. Like, if it were the case we had a system in which people were taken care of, you would see a lot more diversity yes. of belief amongst the you know, yeah, older Yeah, it's literally population. just winnowed down I mean, yeah, by yeah. their I mean, fucking the, beastly system of like social Darwinism. Um, yeah, the for the phrase should be, you know, if you're not lefty when you're 20, you 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 uh, have no heart, and if you're not uh, conservative when you're 60, your heart attack didn't kill you. Somehow, <laughs> you know? Like that, yeah. These are the people who could afford, like, had good health plans, and despite their lifestyle of uh, fried chicken sandwich-based protests <laughs> and, like, drinking 12 ice cream coffees and, and a day also, because they asked for their name to be, like, you know, Blue Lives Matter at Starbucks. And also literally uh, being, like, as white as you can possibly be and then choosing to literally be in the sun all the time. Yes. Just yeah. constantly... Just soaking in UV radiation. Well, oh it, God, they've got to have. <laughs> there, there's got to be a dermatologist there who's just got like a, a like weed a whacker. conveyor belt, <laughs> like in a fucking Looney Tune, where they just <laughs> lay them out <laughs> and they just <laughs> scoop <laughs> shit off of their face all day long. That's well, what Dennis Miller was, was talking Dennis about. Miller was talking about. <laughs> everybody listened to the, Everybody was listening to that in the village. Just like preach, yep. scream, scream, yep, you basil, well, yes, yes. you gotta, gotta, well, yeah. you gotta get a margin. The, I know, buddy. The dermatologist is probably like their hair salon. They're all just sitting around getting scooped out at so the I same says time, to Mabel gossiping. I says Mabel <laughs> <laughs> but hey no the fact that they live this long the fact that they have this accumulated wealth from you know uh, like their father's fucking box factory or like whatever fucking easy job they got after spending five hundred dollars on a four-year college education it's all just a symbol that they are elect Yes. It all, it's yeah, proof yeah. that they, like, they don't have to they, be, they don't have to do anything virtuous to be shown to be worthy of it. The fact that they have it is proof well, that they're virtuous. A big reason why they move there is because Florida has no income yep. tax, which is obviously to the detriment of everyone who isn't privileged enough to get to live in the old people city for Mr. Show. It is a, a fucking a libertarian castle, basically. Yeah. A fortified compound. Yeah. Though, though, actually, I, I, I want to wheel back to an earlier point. When I say marginalize these people, and I know obviously it won't happen, but uh, if the Democrats could ever retake power in Florida, they should immediately cut the villages into 10 different congressional districts. <laughs> yeah, uh, I have another idea. 
a giant dome. <laughs> just a big, clear bubble top. And then they can stay in there, but they can't leave. And they don't get to vote. And nothing, like, that's all they have. Can I add something on that? Just to rope back to the beginning about a dome. That these people are, like, the most insulated, pampered, free from outside thought or action of anybody. And they are the most uh, deeply brainwashed into the Trump cult. So the whole idea that confronting conservatives with like liberal thought is only going to make them more conservative is totally invalidated yep. by the fact that the mm. most insulated are the most themselves. So uh, go tell uh, copies of Nazi. Yeah. Or uh, go into the villages and just make them all go down to the country like during the Cultural Revolution. <laughs> And make them all become fucking dishwashers in the Bronx. I mean, as Matt pointed out, at least the Nazis have the excuse of having lived through the Great Depression and the Weimar Republic. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. Or the, World War One. Yeah, this guy was a World captain War on an won. aircraft carrier yeah. during yeah. Vietnam. Yeah. I'm sorry, that wasn't that wasn't uh, the Mekong Delta. Yeah, buddy. these. these oh, but these, it's John McCain's <laughs> on that carrier. Oh, yeah. Watch out. Yeah. These, <laughs> these people's like Weimar hyperinflation was like Obama saluting with a latte. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. It was miniskirts. Yeah, like it's, it was. It was. Uh, uh, yeah, the second battle of the Somme is when they canceled Last Man Standing. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, when anyone ever you know wants to talk about you know the Trump voter or forget the Trump voter support conservatives. Yeah, Republicans in America, ideologically motivated conservatives. Th- this people. is what you should be thinking about. Like, yes. like they, these are the people that make up and they are the reason why Trump has like the highest approval rating of Republicans within their party of a president, maybe ever yep. since yeah. Ronald Reagan, at least. Mm-hmm. So, and then again, all, all the all the conservative commentators who want to tell you that they they really d- dislike Trump and there's got to be a better way. Uh, sorry, these are the people who support you. Yep. Yeah, that's whatever. Who you, that's who you got. You so. don't. Yeah, you. It's good to listen to people who are uninitiated, maybe even voted Republican and regret it. Just, you know, you just don't have to do anything for people whose main pastime is going to Panera and calling the police on people they see with, like, men they see with earrings. Like, you just, you yeah. don't have to. Another, point, another thing, uh, another point I want to make, uh, uh, it, was, it was, you know, stressed several times in this long profile, but, um, you know, in addition to golf, their other main hobby is just voting. Yeah. Voting yeah. in every election, yeah. Turn all the time, plus even midterms. Yeah, just huge. Always vote, love voting, which I gotta say, uh, you know, does make me a little suspect of people who are very cavalier about, oh, just fuck voting elections. I mean, if there were a, if there were a considerably large, a similarly large group of people who were this fanatically dedicated to voting but weren't um, irredeemably evil, that maybe that's something to build off. Of. Well, the, I don't know. The old anarchist. The old anarchist slogan was always, if voting mattered, they'd make it illegal. And the thing is, they kind of are. Mm. So that shows you that, that it's not the end all be all, obviously, but there's a fucking rule for it. Yeah. Because they are afraid of people who don't vote voting. They are afraid of what would happen if that were to be the case, including Democrats. Those and, establishment Democrats. And I, I do want to point out, whenever we uh, shit on the Trump swine, and they are swine, <laughs> uh, we don't need your holier-than-thou tisk-tisking that we're talking about the poor factory workers in steel towns and the, your romanticized version of Appalachian, the white working class. No, we're talking about these people explicitly. Refer to the article from now on. <laughs> yeah. Do not contact me ever again regarding this matter. Except on literally any other matter. Please contact me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, guys, uh, Twitch stream tonight for Michael's birthday will be the, we're going to be interviewing Trump voters, uh, getting their position about their America with sympathy and empathy for both sides. And, and if you don't like it, contact Virgil. And, and then you're going to shoot them in the head in a virtual uh, playground of deck building and uh, <laughs> of treasury, treasure discovery. Oh, yeah. Trump, I mean, these people would like Fortnite because they get to build a deck and shoot invaders. <laughs> <laughs> they would like Fortnite because you're doing violence to foreigners at uh, way, way more uh, than Trump is. We should- oh, I, I just unlocked the Lieutenant Cali skin. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to all actually, uh, we're going to uh, dive out of an airplane into the villages and then immediately start ransacking people's houses <laughs> for weapons and supplies. Yeah, well, the storm, the storm that comes in is like asbestos. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the... Yeah, Fortnite is now pay to win because you can get a Ben Shapiro skin and its hitboxes are way smaller. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I think that uh, about does it for us this week. Asita, thank you so much for joining us. And I think we should be played out to a little going, going on, on a holiday. holiday. 
going on a holiday. Till next time, guys. Bye. Bye. Hey there, what do you say? We're going on.